Hey, I'm back. This is Chandler for Melder Production, and today I want to go over M Freeform Equalizer. This is a really unique and useful EQ, and today I want to go over some features. Previously, I did videos on how to make like um, impulse responses for guitar using this, but today I want to do some other things. I'll show you just a general overview and some cool things it can do. So let's get started. Uh, first, we have this clip of a synth brass. Now you can see here as an analyzer, and we can take that and we can start adjusting it. You see now we have nodes here, and we can move these up and down, so if I wanted to make it duller like this. Or brighter like this, I don't want to make it too loud though. And so you can use it like a really uh, primitive tilt EQ. But you see here it's like, okay, well this is mostly in the mid-range, so when I move this down and up, Especially up, it's like, ah, it's not doing anything because it's, you know, topping out around here. What we can do is we can actually add another node just by double clicking here and just move this up like this. So let's hear it again. I have to be careful, I don't want to, you know, blow out my uh, speakers by doing this. So always be careful with that. And we can add, even add more nodes here or whatever we want. And you see these little white dots, those can be used to change the curvature. There's also other things we can do. So let's say, for example, ah, I want to do something kind of like weird, like I want like a, a sine wave shape. Right click here, and you see we have these different modes. So now it's in curvature mode too, but let's try changing it to signs. Now if we move this, actually not up, I go to here, and instead of bending it, what it'll do is it'll add these little bumps. You're like, ah, that's not, it's not doing much though. What you can do is actually raise this or lower this, by changing the dots, you can change how many they are. It just tells you oh, there's 12 waves there, like this, or this, or whatever we want. Uh, I'll show you the same thing. Instead of sine mode, you can also have triangle mode, saw mode, pulses mode, stair mode, etc. Now, to be honest, lots of these I think are not so useful for the equalizer, but you know, you never know when they you might want to use it. And you have all these double modes too here, like this, where it's doing things like there. You can change the curvature. And again, I'm not sure how useful these are for equalization, but they're there if you want them. You never know when, you know, creativity strikes. But what I'd probably do is go into here and use drawing mode. So instead of adding nodes, what we can do is just do stuff like this. Let me turn the range down and the volume down so it doesn't get too loud. I'll let you hear this. So you can have those like comb filtering effects if that's really what you want. There we go. But let's say you're like, ah, maybe I want to do this on the left side, but I want something else on the right side. By doing this and having a different sound on the left side, it'll give you more stereo width. So on the left side, I might EQ it like this, but on the right side, I can add another instance of M free form EQ and just invert it. And this will give you a wider stereo image. I might want to go a little bit uh, more subtle than this. And that's a time where you might want to use that sign mode there. So. Uh, of course, set that to taste. Uh, this is, of course, probably a little bit interesting, but you're like, eh, it's not, not that great. Let's go to reset here, and that will clear everything out, and you can set whatever mode you want. You see here we have the quality, and this will uh, determine how accurate this is. Of course, here it always looks accurate in the uh, analyzer, but actually when you notice the EQing, it's like, ah, oh, it's sometimes not that accurate if you have it on the low settings. And if you want, maybe extremely accurate, put it on the extreme settings. But this is also going to use more CPU, so you know, decide yourself how much you want to spend on each. I think the high setting is great for most uses. Another thing is the minimum phase. What the minimum phase will do is it'll change uh, the EQ, EQ settings from, I believe it's uh, linear phase to minimum phase. Linear phase is going to give you some latency, but I think it's usually a little bit better as far as phase goes, so it should sound perhaps a little bit no more natural, at least in some cases. Uh, but minimum phase will have no latency. So if you want to play this in real time, use that. In this case, since I'm not using it in real time, it's just playing things back, I can have it in linear phase, and it's not going to make a difference. Uh, to be honest, most of the time, I don't find there's that much difference in sound quality, but of course, find out yourself. Uh, here we have the range. Uh, what this is going to do, I'll try to give you some examples here if I can. Ooh, there we go. Is determine on the side here, from 0 to 21, 
how much is it, this is affecting things. So if I put it down to here, it's like, okay, this is probably only what, like two or three decibels up. But if I put it here, now this same one is like 12 decibels up. So let me play it so you can hear it. Let's move it down. There's like, oh, it's barely doing anything, but if I move it up. You can see the difference. There's a big difference between 18 decibels and like four decibels. So you can hear that and you can adjust that because sometimes when you do this, it'll be like, ah, this is too subtle or like, ah, this is too much. And you can just, just adjust the range to get it exactly how you like it. But let's move on and I'll show you something the way that I think is very useful. Uh, something very useful you can do with this. Let's say you have a track, in this case, a guitar track. Maybe I recorded this, I like how it sounded, and I recorded this, let's say, a few years ago. Maybe I went to a nice studio, or it was an old amp, or maybe I changed the microphone position and I can't get it back, etc. But what I have is something similar, and it sounds like this. Let's you hear them again. Number one. If this second one is the best I can get, and maybe I need to do an overdub or something, it's like, ah, this is going to sound really jarring if I use this in there. You're immediately going to be tell, um, tell I'm using a different setting. It's not going to sound cohesive. What I want to do is I want this to sound like the first one. So let's say I take the first one. I'm just going to record it, go into here where it says automatic equalizer. I'm going to click on the red and then play this uh, just a little bit so I can get the overall EQ profile like this. Okay, just quick. Go into this one and this is going to be our target. Now what I want to do is make this sound like that. So I just equalize green to sound like red. Click on this. Now let's play it back. Now you can hear like, ah, oh, that's a really big difference. But now let's hear it compared to the first one. So bypass it. They're actually pretty close, but I'm noticing a little bit more high end on the original version. So we can just go in here, just like in drawing mode, and we can go and like smooth this out. And hopefully this will be a little bit closer. I don't know though. Let's hear it. Yeah, it's pretty close. And of course, we can do more adjusting here. We can also adjust the range. So if I think, ah, uh, you know, that's too much, bring it down here. Ah, uh, still getting that mid-range. But let's say if I move it up a little bit more. And of course, I can manually, ah, uh, I think a little bit more here, like this. That might have been too much, but you get the idea. Uh, to be honest, this at this point, I think, ah, you know what, if I put this in a mix, it'll sound good, and I don't think people will notice those small differences. So this is a great thing you can use for that, and it'll also work on other instruments besides uh, your guitar. You do the same thing with a bass or uh, maybe a keyboard sound. Of course, you need to get the sound close, so if you have a completely different amp with different settings, it's going to be hard, and like, oh, this one's distorted and this one's not, that's not going to work. Or if you have a keyboard sound, and oh, this is a old Moog synthesizer and this is a like a DX7 FM synthesizer, that, that's not going to work. But if it's close, it'll work. And the same thing with vocals, so let's say if you used a really nice, uh, really ribbon mic and then you come home and you have like a SM57 and it's like, ah, oh, this sounds different. Before you go out and rent that uh, expensive mic again, try this and see if you can get somewhat close. You might be surprised with how, how well it does. So that's a great thing. And also, we have this IR feature. So let's say, if it's not this, but let's say you made a guitar IR or something else. In the previous video, I showed like, oh, you need to use uh, some other impulse response. It was really uh, convoluted. Now all you have to do is click the IR button here, 
click write in file name and click OK. And it'll export everything that's in here as an impulse response. And that way you can use that in the future. So if you had that and you noticed, oh, I matched this with my uh, expensive rhythm, rhythm uh, say ribbon mic to, let's say your, whatever your home mic is at SM57 or something. And you like it, it's like, ah, oh, this did an amazing job. You can export that impulse response and just use that again for future projects, which is good. And the same thing with a guitar IR, a IR of anything else. Also, this will process things in uh, like batch processing. So instead of going into the DAW and trying to uh, import it, using M Freeform EQ, export it, etc. If you have something you want to use, all you have to do is go into this wave or actually here and open it. Or even easier, just go into here and drag it into here where it says wave. Are you sure you want to rewrite this file? Yes. And it will EQ it for you automatically, which is really useful if you have a lots of files. So let's say I have like two here, drag them in. Are you sure you want to rewrite these files? Yes. And it will do two. So especially if let's say you have something like, oh man, I recorded all these different uh, vocals, but Let's say they all have too much low end rumble. You can go and you know remove it here, and then you can take those like 50 files, just click it, put it in wave, and it will process them all for you. One thing it might uh, you might want to check before is let's say you might want to compare these before and after. Don't use the original file. Take this and just make a copy of it. And then work on the copy. That way you can compare just to make sure. So that's uh, something that might save you some time and lots of headache so you don't mess up your original files. But overall, I think M Freeform EQ can do lots of things. It's useful in lots of different situations. Uh, if you want to take resonances out, you, all you have to do is just look in here and just draw them and get rid of them. You can zoom in if you want, like here. That's what you need. And also here, the smoothness, if you're wondering what that does. You see how smooth this curve is? Actually, it's not that smooth. We can go in here and see like, oh, there's big differences here and you can make it even more smooth. Uh, these will probably add resonances, which you may want or may not want. And in some cases, when you don't, you can add, make the smoothness even more. And this, it doesn't only affect what it looks like here, but it will also affect the equalization. So if I equalize it now with the smoothness at zero, you see it adds all of those small bumps and resonances. So add those in as you want. But hopefully I gave a good overview of this. If you haven't, give this a thumbs up, leave me any questions down below, and check out all the other plugins at meldaproduction.com. Till next time, see you.